2014 has been quite a year for PC gaming. I'm sure we're all going to remember it for different reasons and for different games. There have been so many great games this year, it would be irresponsible to try and say which are the best. Plus, I've been playing a lot of World of Warcraft. It's almost the only thing I've been playing since August. Warlords of Draenor has revitalized the game in a way I had not expected. I'll see if I can stop managing my garrison long enough to give you the top 10 games I didn't play enough of, thanks to World of Warcraft. Here are the rules I gave myself for composing this list. Each game had to be a game that I had played. This ruled out games like Dragon Age Inquisition, Wasteland 2, and Shovel Knight. All great games that I really want to play, but I've never started. Or bought. Additionally, it has to be a game I want to play more of. This rules out great games like Shadow of Mordor, the Banner Saga, and Broken Age. I've played through their story, and for now, I'm happy with the experience I had. As a final rule, it had to be a game released in 2014 or a persistent world, allowing me to include MMOs in the list. Speaking of, let's start with the Rouse Dower in the room. At number 10, Wildstar. Between beta and release, this is easily my most played game of 2014. Wildstar has a beautiful art direction and one of the best soundtracks of the year. Combine these aesthetics with the most compelling MMO combat system, an amazingly customizable UI, an interesting story, and strong group content. You'd think you'd have a slam dunk, but somehow it just didn't gel. It felt hollow. As content updates slowed down, and as my friends stopped playing, I returned to World of Warcraft's warm embrace. The development team at Carbine has changed, and Wildstar's future is uncertain, but the November content update included some great improvements, and more content is coming early next year. I'm sure I'll return to Nexus at some point in 2015 to experience these changes firsthand. Coming in at number 9 is a game that could be integrated into World of Warcraft by this time next year. It's Hearthstone, Heroes of Warcraft. There is no time tracker in Hearthstone, which is probably a good idea, but I've got around 1,500 games played. That's a lot of Hearthstone. And with the new set of cards, it's likely I'll be getting back into the habit of finishing my dailies in an ultimately doomed attempt to avoid shoveling even more money into this truly enjoyable card game. The mechanics of Hearthstone are easy to pick up, and the sound assets and visuals are very satisfying. It's possible to have a fun time casually, and continues to be compelling all the way up to the upper brackets of play. Is it pay to win? Not really. There are players who have proven that it is possible to get to the top tier of play with free cards. It is certainly more entertaining once you get more cards. So let's split the difference and call it pay to fun. If there's one thing you can count on an MMO for, it's that it's going to eat up way more time than you think it is. I never finished the primary campaign of Final Fantasy XIV, but I still managed to put in more than 60 hours into this title, which locks it in at number 8. The most recent patch concludes the primary story of Final Fantasy XIV, opening up the way for next year's expansion, which will introduce a bunch of new content and features. I've been tempted to return to Final Fantasy recently, but Warcraft is keeping that tamp down for now. I will be returning to Eorzea soon, though. I want to experience this story firsthand before the world expands. At number 7, we have FTL, Faster Than Light, which got a free expansion in March to FTL Advanced Edition, along with a tablet release. I've put 50 hours into FTL according to Steam, and I'd do it all over again. FTL is a smartly designed space roguelike. You navigate eight sectors of space, one jump point at a time, while running from an encroaching enemy fleet. Each jump point you explore gives you an opportunity to find resources needed to strengthen your ship, but you never know what you're going to have to deal with in order to collect those resources, because the maps are randomly generated for each new game. And if you make a bad call, that's the end of your journey. Time to start over. Advanced Edition added a ton of improvements to the core game, 
But if you pick that up back in March and are looking for something deeper, there is the community developed Captain's Mod that adds all sorts of crazy things. As I left for BlizzCon, The Binding of Isaac Rebirth released, and since Warlords of Draenor launched just a week later, it's no wonder that I've only managed to play 44 hours of Rebirth, putting it at number 6. The Binding of Isaac is a twin-stick shooter roguelike. Clear 10 randomly generated maps of increasing difficulty while collecting items that make your character stronger. Or, if not stronger, at least different. Rebirth is sporting 401 items, about double the number found in the original, and many more of these items have synergies with one another. Rebirth has its own engine and a smooth pixel art style that replaces the hand-drawn sprites of Wrath of the Lamb. It also features new, more ambient music. I know that all the poop and creepy imagery puts some people off, but to me, Isaac has such strong gameplay that I never even give it a second thought. It is a highly refined formula, executed to perfection. At number 5, I've got Invisible Ink, with 18 hours on record. Invisible Ink is a turn-based stealth and infiltration game developed by Clay. It's in early access, and it's still one of the best games I've ever played. With each update, I try and get in and run a game, but thanks to World of Warcraft, I fell behind in November. Clay has been adding new items and characters, as well as refining the story with each update. Invisible Ink is another roguelike. You and your team infiltrate randomly generated secure offices, and attempt to steal resources needed for later, harder missions without being caught or killed. It's a tactical masterpiece, and you can bet I'll be returning to Invisible Ink in 2015. Number 4 goes to Civilization Beyond Earth. Truthfully, at 10 hours, I've probably played enough of Beyond Earth for now, but I have friends who would love nothing more than for me to play some multiplayer with them. But I'm far too busy playing Warcraft. It's more likely I'd play Civ 5 than Beyond Earth in its current state, but you know there's going to be some amazing expansion in 2015, and then another one in 2016. Then, you better believe I'm going to want to play another 100 hours just like I did with Civ 5. Another truly promising early access title is Brad Muir's Massive Chalice. It's in at number 3 with 5 hours played. I supported this game on Kickstarter, but I'm holding off until it's done. I think they just recently added multi-class heroes in the most recent build, but I have not dug in much past the starting missions to confirm that. This is another turn-based strategy game. The primary hook here is that you are managing a small kingdom that's under siege over many generations. You have to arrange marriages, research technology, train heroes, and control them in combat. The art style, the tone, and the music are amazing. It's done a lot to restore my faith in Double Fine. I expect to dump many hours into Massive Chalice in 2015. Moving on to number 2 is a game that kind of caught me by surprise. I played 4 hours of Dungeon of the Endless in order to unlock Steam cards, and damn if it wasn't a ton of fun. This is another roguelike. You know the formula by this point. Clear dungeon floors, get stronger, fight stronger enemies, repeat until end of dungeon, or your death. The style of play here is a little bit different though, it plays similar to FTL. You don't directly control your players, you tell them which rooms to go to, and they go to the room and do what needs doing. It's a very zen-like experience. The art style and music supports this casual playstyle, but don't be fooled. It gets challenging, especially when you activate the harder difficulties. There's many party configurations, several different game modes, and even co-op play. I hope I find more time for Dungeons of the Endless in 2015. Finally, at number 1, the game I played the least thanks to World of Warcraft in 2014 was Divinity Original Sin. This is a traditional CRPG for a modern age. There are two characters, and if you play solo, you control both. In co-op, each player controls one. They are fully customizable, with your choice of many different classes, as well as your choice of gender and appearance. 
The combat is done in a turn-based style, and there are fun RP conversations the players will have with each other throughout the adventure. This allows you to develop their personalities individually, and NPCs will react to the traits that you build in these conversations. Beyond the core campaign, there is also a robust development tool allowing the community to create their own rich stories. This is a game capable of eating hundreds and hundreds of hours. So it's a shame I've only given it 110 minutes so far.